Hey, welcome to the channel, Josh Gordon Music. We're gonna look at the Donner Arena 2000, but we're going to look at the Donner Control desktop editing software. There's been plenty of videos doing walkthroughs about the Donner Arena 2000's features and it's in the, you know the inputs and outputs and everything you can do with it. I do plan on doing some presets with it because it does sound pretty good. Um, but let's take a dive into the actual desktop editing software. I mean, it has some nice touch features here um, on the unit itself. And the unit's great, nice, small, compact, can fit in the gig bag pocket. So you can do plenty of editing on the unit itself. But if you're like me, I prefer a desktop editor to really sit there and fine tune your presets because I like to do it beforehand. It's great to know how to do it on the fly at the gig to, you know, make your adjustments. But I like to do, you know, setting up at home. So let's, uh, you know, we have the first preset up there called Hi There. So let's have a look at the, some of the, the features here and how to tweak stuff. So the first thing I usually look for is in the top left here. And there's not really anything in the menu. There's like, you know, DC. So I guess Donner Control Services, Quit, blah, blah, blah. So you have here all your, your preset banks and uh, you have you can do impulse response slots so that's great and and then here this menu is telling you like what block you're on and you have all your choices so there's lots of amps and effects definitely more than enough for a beginner to use this i mean this is a great it's affordable unit i got it yesterday um about 300 canadian on amazon so let's call that 225 us so it's, not, it's cheap price but you get a good amount of stuff um with it all right so let's look at the features here along the these are the menu items here and it starts with a tuner so tuner's great there you know so i'm not going to tune up but uh tuner's great and look muted or bypassed options and you can change the pitch so that's great and i like the, that pop-up box i like the design of that nice and straightforward and simple so next control now, again, I've just got this unit. I'm gonna do more diving into, um, you know, how to assign controls to the switches and, and use this as like a stomp, a uh, pedal board stomp mode. But for now, it looks like this first switch is grayed out, but it looks like you can assign things. So for right now, it looks like the tuner is assigned to the middle switch, which is B and C is reverb. So, and, and this is right now is banking up and down on me. So, but there's some switch assignments. So again, we'll get, we'll get to that. So I will go back to high there and I let, you know, they have a nice knob here where you can adjust presets. So, so we did con uh, control expression pedal settings. Again, I haven't do dove into it yet, but I'll look at it. If this is something you want to see, like anything specific on here for settings, how to do it, drop a comment below. Okay. And oh, in the, in the description box below, I will put a link to, um, where you can download this editor. Okay. From, from Donner. So. FX trail, nice and simple. This is if you want your, you know, uh, trailing effects when you, I guess, switching between presets. Say you have like a delay, a, you know, a series of repeats or a reverb that's shimmering and you switch to the next patch. Well, those trails will continue until they die out. So if you can have that on or off. So that's, that's I like that. USB audio. So here's a great little feature. So besides your, your levels for playing and recording, you can choose your outputs. Now there's two XLR and two quarter inch. Now I'm going to assume that, you know, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure if this is going to be through the USB cable or if it's, you know, if say, if you are doing two cables, like say you do two quarter inches out into an interface, because if you're using this for an interface itself, that obviously these quarter inch outputs won't matter. Point of this feature is though, that you, it looks like you can record two signals. So one, you could have wet, one, you could have dry, or you could have both dry or both wet. Why you do that? I'm not sure, but I think that's a great feature because there are times where you might be doing a session or whatever recording and they want the dry signal so that they could put their own effects on it, post production effects or whatever. So that's a nice option. Input output. So your input level. Now, uh, the output, I believe, is this, this is what it's saying is here to turn the cab block on or off, whether you're going through XLR or quarter inch. So this is a great feature if you're going to front of house. The one thing I don't like about this, and it seems to be with more of the budget modelers, is that they don't have this for like uh, turning the amp and cab off for your output. Because with this, 
say you're running the quarter inch into the front of a real amp. You can turn the cab off, that's great, but you'll still have the amp lock on, so that might not sound so good running into your amp. But maybe with some tweaking, you'll come up with a preset that works for you, or maybe a four cable method will work to solve that. But let's say the scenario is here. I turn uh, the cab off. So now with this setting, I have my full preset going through XLR into the front of house, your mixing desk, and then I have everything except the cab going into my real amp. So that's a nice feature. But again, I wish you could e even include the amp. And, and I think that would even be better. That's just my opinion. Now, the next here, we have a MIDI. And I honestly, I don't use MIDI. I don't know much about MIDI, but it looks like the, um, you know, you can uh, have a MIDI controller connected to this and you could probably assign a whole bunch of patches so that you're not banking up and down, up and down. You could have probably, you know, let's just say you had a controller that had 10, 10 switches on it and that's your 10, 10 presets that you're using for your gig. Well, there you go. That, that's a nice feature to have too. And then here's your BPM for the drum machine that you can adjust. So now let's look at the blocks. And basically we're, we're on the amp here and let's, yeah, let's hear it. Sounds really good. I really like the cleans on this and the, I've, I've played around with it. Reverbs, everything sounds great. As with most modelers for me, the drives are always tend to be a little, you know, lacking compared to the a real analog pedal, but you, you, you know, it's still great. Um, so basically all these blocks have the same kind of style here. Now, you know, they vary in the amount of parameters you can change, but the style here is this kind of a horseshoe, we'll call it, where you can just click on it and drag it. Um, you know, if you click within the box, some some modeling software, some modelers, you can actually click in the box and type the number that you want, but doesn't seem to be the case here. But you can just drag, uh, you know, click and drag to change the parameters. OK, and then, you know, for this, that's your on and off button here. So let's say I, I pick um, the block itself to get to the comps. So that's my menu. But to turn the effect on, you got to go down here. All right. And you can, and I don't know if there's a list that um, tells you what e each of these effects is modeled after. I'm going to look for that. But that's how you turn the block on and off here. And that's how you get your menu selection. One other thing that I like that I, I should be, I think all modelers might have them. I don't know. I can't really make that statement, can I? But the order of your effects. Now, at first I thought, oh, how do you do this? It's not very obvious, but you, you can change them because, for example, I like a noise gate. I'm going to turn it on, but I want it first. So what you do is click on the block, left click, hold, and then drag. And I'm going to drag it all the way to the front. Now I got it there. And you can do that with any of these uh, blocks to have them in the order that you want. Because at first I thought, well, it's all laid out here. Comp, FX, A, Drive, Amp, Cab, EQ. So I thought, well, you know, maybe I'm not going to be able to move the blocks because this is the order of these buttons. But that's, that's just a, 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 a touch control on the unit itself. So that's a nice feature too, to move the blocks. Okay, so basically uh, that's it. I mean, I'm not going into demos of, of sounds and whatnot here, but I mean, if <laughs> I wanted to put like say a, a TS9 on this, like uh, let's make sure the volume's not too crazy. Let's let's see how, how that would go and see. So I'm, that's how you change your parameter. Let's hear it. <laughs> So yeah, so on, this is not a comparison video, but if I think about this compared to other desktop editors, I mean, you know, when you get higher up, they're more involved, but this is, this is great. It's nice, simple controls laid out in a nice straightforward format. And there's not too many parameters per effect. There might, there might be some that have a little, be more involved than others, but generally that's what you're looking at. So these little horseshoes and uh, adjust to your taste. Okay, so that's my little walkthrough of the Donner Control desktop editing software. As I said, I think I'm going to make a few presets for this because this does sound good. And um, we'll catch you in the next video.